brought to you by... The thought that there are people out there who feast upon their own, savoring the flesh of another the way that we do a burger or a juicy steak, has churned the stomach of thousands in such films as Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferox, and even the SOV Cannibal Campout. What's even more terrifying is that there are still tribes out there in the untouched parts of the world, too dangerous for most to tread, where the practice is still alive and well. Hello friends, and welcome back to ETF. The Green Inferno is a nostalgic throwback to the bygone era of visceral cannibal cinema, directed by none other than Eli Roth. Known for his work in the horror genre with films like Cabin Fever and Hostel 1 and 2, Roth crafts a faithful homage to the cannibal exploitation films of the late 70s, particularly Ruggiero Diodato's Cannibal Holocaust. This film follows a group of student activists who travel to the Amazon rainforest to save a native tribe from deforestation, only to find themselves captured by the very people they intended to protect. Roth chose to shoot his cannibal outing in the actual Amazon rainforest, in an attempt to capture the authentic and immersive environment that categorized the original cannibal films. This decision added a layer of realism and intensity to the film. The remote location presented logistical challenges, mirroring the difficulties faced by characters in the film and enhancing the sense of isolation and danger. He even involved local indigenous tribes in this production. This approach aimed to lend further authenticity to the portrayal of the tribe, while also respecting and incorporating their culture and perspectives. The production team spent time with these tribes, learning about their customs and lifestyles. These interactions influenced the depiction of the tribe in the film, striving to balance the horror with respect for the real communities. Following the tradition of the genre, Roth focused on practical effects to achieve the film's graphic violence and gore. This decision was influenced by the realism and impact of the effects in Cannibal Holocaust. Now legendary effects artist Greg Nicotero, known primarily these days for his work on The Walking Dead, was brought in to create the film's gruesome and realistic depictions of brutal and violent murder. While paying homage to the cannibal genre, it's clear that Roth aimed to critique modern activism and the superficiality of social media-driven causes. This meta-commentary added a contemporary layer to the film's themes, reflecting current social and political issues. The portrayal of the student activists as naive and ill-prepared for the realities they face within the jungle echoes the genre's critique of Western interventionism. Roth was able to strike the balance he was looking for, paying tribute to the cannibal films he loved so much while subverting certain expectations. For instance, the film's ending and character arcs provide a modern twist on the genre's tropes. The film's title itself is a direct homage to the alternate title for Cannibal Holocaust, signaling Roth's intent to both honor and redefine the genre. This film taps into primal fears of the unknown and the other. The dense, uncharted Amazon jungle represents an unfamiliar and dangerous environment, triggering an innate fear of what lies beyond human understanding and control. The setting plays on the fear of being lost and isolated in a place where conventional rules of society don't really apply. The characters' reaction to their capture and impending doom highlight the fight-or-flight response. Justine's initial panic, followed by a desperate struggle for survival, 
showcases the psychological and physiological stress responses that humans experience when faced with life-threatening situations. The film depicts varying reactions among the group, from paralysis and shock to attempts at escape and negotiation. Initially, the activists are united by a common cause and a strong sense of social identity. However, once they are captured, the group's cohesion rapidly deteriorates. Stress and fear lead to conflict, betrayal, and a breakdown of social norms. This disintegration mirrors real-life scenarios, where extreme stress can fracture even the strongest social bonds. The characters exhibit symptoms of acute stress disorder during their captivity, such as intense fear, helplessness, and dissociation. Justine's ordeal in particular sets the stage for potential PTSD, characterized by flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety. The film vividly portrays the immediate psychological trauma resulting from extreme violence and fear. Survivor's guilt is another potential outcome for characters who manage to escape. Justine, having witnessed the horrific deaths of her companions, might struggle with guilt and questions about why she survived while others did not. This psychological burden can have long-lasting effects on her mental health. Alejandro's charismatic yet manipulative leadership exploits the group's idealism. His ability to persuade and control highlights psychological principles of influence and authority. When his true nature is revealed, it causes a significant psychological shift in the group's perception of him, leading to feelings of betrayal and utter mistrust. The film's depiction of these activists initial viewing the indigenous tribe through a western lens shifts dramatically as they encounter the tribe's cannibalistic practices. This culture shock challenges their preconceived notions and forces them to confront the limitations of their understanding. The psychological impact of this confrontation with an alien culture is profound leading to a re-evaluation of their own values and assumptions. The extreme situations in this film lead these characters to engage in moral disengagement, a psychological process where individuals justify their actions to align with their survival instincts. This can be seen in the characters' rationalization of violent acts or decisions that they would normally never consider, highlighting how extreme stress can warp moral judgment. Eli Roth's direction is both a strength and weakness of the film. He efficiently builds tension and horror, with the jungle setting providing a visually stunning yet menacing backdrop. The cinematography captures the lush, vibrant beauty of the rainforest, juxtaposed with the horrific violence that unfolds. However, Roth's penchant for shock value and graphic violence may alienate some viewers. The film's explicit gore and disturbing imagery are not for the faint of heart, and the focus on brutality can overshadow the narrative and character development. The Green Inferno is a polarizing film that succeeds in delivering visceral horror and unsettling tension. Eli Roth's homage to cannibal exploitation films is unapologetically brutal and gory making it a challenging watch. While the film's commentary on activism and cultural clash is thought-provoking, its impact is somewhat diluted by the focus on shock. For fans of extreme horror and exploitation films, The Green Inferno offers a harrowing experience, but it may not appeal to a broader audience due to its graphic content and highly controversial themes. That's going to be all for now. I hope you enjoyed this discussion and it inspires you to check this film out for yourself. I placed the link down in the description on where you can get a copy for your collection. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, subscribe for more content, and if you really want to help support this channel, we do still have a Patreon and every little bit helps us grow. Until next time, stay safe, stay the fuck away from the rainforest, and as always, thanks for watching.